How many of you ever decided not to do something based upon an assumption? Raise your hands, please. And so that's why it's important for us to be strategic and experiential and, and being able to tell the story to distract them from their current story, distract, dispute, break down the limited belief system and inspire them to say yes to a new opportunity in their lives. And, and so as a result, I didn't do what I'm doing now because I had such a tremendous inferiority, inferiority complex because of my lack of, of college education. I stopped myself. It's an African proverb that says there's no enemy within. The enemy outside can do us no harm. And so as you look at yourself, as you look at your goals, look at your dreams, it's very important that you take time every day and write this down to retrain your thinking. You gotta retrain your thinking. Because how we live our lives is a result of the story that we bought into. I had to retrain my thinking because of what I saw. Studies indicating that the decisions we make in life is directly related to the things that we saw, the things that we experienced, the conversations we've been exposed to between age zero and five. And so as a result of that, my experience, I had to begin to engage in a process of retraining my mindset. And I didn't even know what I was doing. But this man, Mr. Sadursky, I'll never forget. Leslie, come in here. Yes, sir. Look at my shoes. You can shine them better than this. I do apologize, sir. I'll do a better job. And his wife said, please don't yell at him like that. That's not nice. He's, he's just a kid. He's only 10 years old. He should do a better job than that. He can. I said, it's okay, Mrs. Sadursky. And he should have yelled at me. He was a very rude, arrogant guy, but he was a kind guy too. What I loved about him, every day he had a routine. It was his time in the morning he spent working on his mind. And I wanted to be in the office as he was shining his shoes, listening to Earl Nightingale. All of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. Listening to Dr. Dennis Waitley, people form habits and habits create futures. Listening to Zig Ziglar, if you give enough people what they want, they will give you what you want. Listening to Jim Rohn, when the end comes for you, let it find you conquering a new mountain, not sliding down an old one. Listening and reading the words of Winston Churchill, the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it, ignorance may deride it, but at the end, there it is. Reading from my favorite book, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listening to these words help to create a different vision for myself. Some of you are already doing it right now. I'm saying this is a time more than ever that you want to begin to inoculate yourself with positive words, coming to conventions, showing up on meetings, being on the calls to make yourself unstoppable, to get out of your mind the polluting negative thoughts that's causing most people to go through life being stuck because they're volunteer victims. Somebody said that many people die at age 25 and don't get buried until they're 65 because they got so much garbage in their minds. You are here because you've got a clear vision of what you want and where you're going. Give yourselves a round of applause. Come on, bring your energy level up. Yes, yes. You want more. You want more. You're different. You're different than everybody else. Don't worry if they don't get it. Don't try and convince people to do this business. A person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. You are not like everybody else. You can walk outside and find pigeons, but if you're looking for eagles, it's going to take you a minute. You are different. It's lonely at the top. How many of you know it's lonely at the top? Raise your hands. It's lonely at the top, but you eat better. That's what I'm talking about. You're different. 
One great entrepreneur said, I choose not to be a common man. It's my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dull by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to live from hand to mouth. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the still calm of utopia. I will never cow before any master, nor bend to any threat. It's my heritage is to stand erect, proud and unafraid to face the world boldly and say, this I have done. You showed up because you're building a business that you can stand and say, I did this. I did this. This is my dream. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yes. 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 Yes! There's something in you that wouldn't allow you to stop. Dr. Howard Thurman. He said there's something in each and every one of you that waits and listens to the voice of the genuine in yourself. It will be perhaps the only guide you will ever have. And if you cannot hear it, all of your life, your days will be spent on the ends of strings that somebody else pulls. And I say to you, the reason you showed up, even though you couldn't afford to be here, the reason you drove hundreds of miles, flew around the world, there's something in you, in your heart of hearts, that said, I'm not going to let anybody pull my strings. It said, I'm going to control my own personal economy. It said, I've got a dream I want to achieve. I want my children to have a choice of the kind of education that they want. That said, I am the captain of my ship. That said, I'm going to control my destiny. And whatever it takes, I'm willing to do the work. Give yourselves a round of applause. Nineteen sixty one, nineteen sixty one. President John F. Kennedy had a decision to make. The decision was whether or not to call a news conference and tell the world the United States was going to go to the moon. And I submit to you that the decision to do that was very risky. And what governed his thinking is what governed your thinking when you decided, I'm going to do this. See, the technology did not exist. The answer of what will it take did not exist. No one had ever done it before. But he made a decision. He looked at Werner Van Braun, the most brilliant scientist of that day. And he said, Werner, what will it take for us to go to the moon? And he spoke five words. And those five words, I think, is what governs most entrepreneurs. Those five words, I think, is what give people like you the courage to pursue their dreams. Those five words is what I think people who are pioneers, people who are breaking new ground, make decisions on. He said, what will it take for us to go to the moon? And the response was, the will to do it. As you look at yourself, as you look at your business, as we look into 2015 and beyond, what will it take for you to increase your business, the will to do it? What will it take for you to become more powerful in your presentation skills and be able to increase the number of people to quadruple your business, the will to do it? What will it take for you when others are quitting because of the rejections, when others are stopping because they just become so discouraged 
discouraged and they have creditors breathing down their neck and they have family members and friends telling them that they're fool. What is it that will allow you to have the mental resiliency to keep on keeping on, to keep your commitment to your commitment, the will to do it? Every time I say it and ask you a question, I want you to say the will to do it. What will it take for you to build your business? What will it take for you to increase your recruiting? What will it take for you to bring out the greatness in you and to make your mark? What will it take for you to become a high achiever and to bring out the billionaire in you? Shake someone's hand on your right and left and say, I've got the will. I've got the will. Mr. Washington, this man who taught me, he said, Mr. Brown, you want to make it in life? He said, number one, develop your mind. You don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. Number two, develop your communication skills. Once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. Three, practice the principle of OQP, only quality people. Let us say together, only quality people. As you think about your goals and dreams, this is not for everybody. You want to build an organization with only quality people. Not people who need more, but people who want more. You want to surround yourself with people that are hungry. People that are hungry are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. People that are hungry do what they know, not what they feel. See, I didn't do this for years because I knew it would be hard. And Mr. Washington said something to me. Mike Williams, my mentor, you want to go online and find his book, The Road to Your Best Stuff. He said something that grabbed me, and I want you to put this someplace where you can see it. See, you build this business through persistence. You got to affirm, I will persist until I succeed. You build it through patience. It takes time to grow orchids. It's faster to grow roses, but orchids, that takes time. You have to have persistence. You have to have patience and perseverance. It takes courage to come back again and again and again. Because in order to build the business, it's hard work. It's H-A-R-D and H-E-A-R-T. Are you with me there? Write this down. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. If you do what is easy, point out all oh, this is some pyramid scheme. Oh, I've been talking to people and nobody's interested. I talked to people and they said no. Oh, I've done that before. Come up with excuses. If you do what is easy, always looking for a way to give yourself a pass, to let yourself off the hook, to do what everybody else is doing, a job, the journey of the broke. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. People working on jobs that they hate, that they hate. The, Heart attack rate on Monday morning between 6 o'clock and 10 o'clock increases by 35%. People going to jobs that they hate. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. Working two and three jobs for one paycheck and no job security. But there is something in you that says, you know, I'm making some good money. But you know what? I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. A friend of mine, she's here. I'm so honored to be in her presence, Kim Wee. She went to do a presentation, drove from Los Angeles to San Francisco, 
and 20 people in a room, and they said, yes, she's an electrifying speaker, great presenter, yes. And when she left, the dream busters took the floor. And when the dream busters finished with those people who had goals and dreams of a new life, they sabotaged Kim. And they called her before she can get home and said, no, we're not going to do it. And at that moment, she could have quit. Write this down, your private voice. Every entrepreneur, you have two things going for you. You have an energy signature, and some of you will be working with, and you have a private voice. Eight to nine decisions out of 10 that you make are governed by that private voice. When they called and said no, her private voice said, you're wasting your time. You don't need to do this. Your husband is a doctor. You don't need to do this. Your mother, you need to spend more time with your child. Get this crazy idea out of your mind. But rather than do that, she started talking to herself. Rather than do that, she started listening to motivational messages that would build herself up from the inside. And as a result of her saying, yes, I can do this, as a result of ignoring knowing the dream busters, now she's one of the top 10 producers in the world in multi-level marketing. Give her a round of applause. Kim Wee, stand up. Give her a round of applause. Yes. Yes. In the world. And that's why you are here. There's a voice in you that is said, I can do this. I know others have failed. I can do this. I know others have said that, that I can't do it. I've had setbacks in life. How many of you had some failures? Raise your hands, please. How many of you had some no's in your life? Raise your hands, please. Shake someone down on your right and left and say, make no your vitamin. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to make it in life, you've got to make no your vitamin. You've got to know every no brings you a step closer to a yes. Anybody can stop because someone said no. But there's something in you, in your heart of hearts, that's saying, I'm not a quitter. There's something in you that says, I've got the will to do it. There's something in you that says, I'm going to find a way. Mr. Brown, what do you want to do with your life, young man? Sir, I'd like to become a disc jockey. Why? Sir, because I want to buy my mother a home. He said, great. Listen to Paul Harvey. Here are my car keys. Go in the car. 12 noon. He comes on every day. Why? Because if you want to be successful, study the people that are doing what you want to do. He's the best in the world when it comes to communication. I suggest to you as you look at what you want to achieve, look at the top achievers. Understand and know they are only an example. They are not an exception. They're an example of what you can do because success leaves clues. Follow the system, watch the leaders, and study them. I did that. And he said, Mr. Brown, detoxify your life. Let all the negative people in your life go. Can I change them? No. It's a full-time job changing yourself. He's right. He's right. You can't change people. It's hard changing yourself. And there's some people so negative they can walk into a dark room and begin to develop. <laughs> he said, practice OQP, only quality people. He said, I want you to see yourself as a disc jockey. You want to be a disc jockey? Visualize yourself being on radio. You want to be a top performer? Visualize yourself building the business. Visualize yourself coming across the stage, accepting an award for your recognition of your hard work. See it in your mind's eye. He said, I'll give you all your eyes can see. And I had to see myself on stage as I'm presenting right now. I've been here many times before I showed up in my mind. All your goals are achieved twice. First, in the mind, then, and without. And then finally, he said, Mr. Brown, I said, yes, sir. You want to be a disc jockey? Yes, sir. 
He said, you got to be hungry. I said, why do you keep saying that? He said, people that are hungry are relentless. People that are hungry, unstoppable. People that are hungry, no excuse is acceptable. I said, sir, I'm hungry to take care of my mother. All my life, people have always compared me to my brother because I'm not smart like him. It takes me longer to get things than most people. I have to hear it again and again. But once I got it, sir, I got it. You, you're the only person that never called me stupid or dumb. You never called me DT, the dumb twin. You, you look at me like, um, like I'm somebody. I've never had a father. And I, I watch you. And I, I want to be able to talk like you. I, I get choked up sometimes because I can't get my thoughts out, sir. But I, I want to do what you do. And I want to make my mama proud. He said, you can do it, Mr. Brown. I've given you all you can get from me. Now it's on you. If you want to be a disc jockey, go out into the marketplace. I went to apply for a job on Miami Beach. Milton Butterball Smith was a program director. Hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you, sir? My name is Les Brown, sir. I like to be a disc jockey. Young man, you have any journalism in your background? No, sir, I don't. Have any experience in broadcasting? No, sir. But let me, let me audition for you, sir. Let me show you how good I am. All I want, sir, is a shot. Just let me, let me audition. He said, no. How many of you have been rejected? Raise your hands, please. I was devastated with rejection. I said, Mr. Washington, they said no. He said, don't take it personally. Most people are so negative, they have to say no seven times before they say yes. He said, you got to be hungry. Go back again. I went back again. Hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you, sir? Now, my name is Les Brown, sir. I like to be this chuck. He said, I know what your name is. Weren't you here yesterday? I said, yes, sir, I was. Didn't I tell you no yesterday? I said, yes, sir, you did. He said, then why are you back today? I said, well, sir, I didn't know whether or not somebody was laid off or somebody was fired, sir. He said, no one was laid off or fired. Now, get on out of here. I came back the next day. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you, sir? My name is Les Brown, sir. I like to be a disc jockey. He said, I know what your name is. Weren't you here the last two days? I said, yes, sir. Didn't I tell you no the last two days? I said, yes, sir. He said, then why are you back today? I said, sir, I, I didn't know whether that someone got sick or someone died, sir. <laughs> no one got sick or died. No one was laid off or fired. Now, don't you come back here again? I came back the next day talking loud, looking happy, like I was singing for the first time. I said, hello, Mr. Waterfall. How are you? He looked at me with rage. He says, go get me some coffee. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> As you think about your goals and dreams, you've got to make know your vitamin. I became the errand boy for the disc jockeys. I'd go get their lunch and their dinner, and I'd stand in the control room watching them move their hands, knowing my time will come. Let us say together, I expect to live my dream. I, I began to serve them. My, my favorite book says, the greatest among you will be your servant. Learn how to be a good server. And so pretty soon, I was, write this down, building a relationship. People build relationships with people they know, like, and trust, and have proven themselves. And they said, look here, young boy. Who cleaned my car today? I did, sir. How much do I owe you? Nothing, sir. You cleaned it inside and out. You waxed it, yes. I don't owe you anything, no, sir. I just wanted to help out. Write this down. Give before you ask. I was giving service. I was giving service first. He said, whoa. Yeah, Donna Ross and the Supremes are coming to town, the Four Tops and the Temptations. Here are my car keys. I pick them up and take them to the Fountain Blue Hotel on Miami Beach. I said, be my pleasure to serve you, sir. I would drive these entertainers all over Miami Beach and the disc jockeys big long Cadillacs. I didn't have any driver's license, but I'll drive it like a handsome. 
Then one day, it was a Saturday afternoon, a disc jockey by the name of Rockin' Roger was drinking while he was on the air. He began to slur his words. He got so drunk he was about to fall off the chair. It was a Saturday afternoon, and I was the only one there looking at him through the control room window, walking back and forth. <laughs> Young, ready, and hungry. I was saying, drink, rock, drink. Drink, rock. I'd have gone get him some more if he'd asked me to. Then pretty soon the phone rang with the general manager and I answered the phone. I said, hello? He said, young boy, this is Mr. Klein. I said, I know. He said, Rock can't finish the show. I said, I know. He said, will you call one of the other DJs in? I said, yes, sir. I hung the phone up. I said, now he must be think I'm crazy. I called my mom and my girlfriend, Cassandra. I said, y'all come out on the front porch and turn on the radio. I'm about to come on the air. I waited for about 20 minutes and I called him back and said, Mr. Klein, I can't find nobody. He said, young boy, you know how to work the controls? I said, yes, sir. He said, go in there and segue the record. Said, Don't you say nothing here. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get old Rock out of the way. I put on a fast record. I said, look out, this is me, LB, Triple P. Les Brown, your platter playing papa. There were none before me, and there will be none after me. Therefore, that makes me the one and only. Young and single and love to mingle, certified, bona fide, doably qualified to bring you satisfaction and a whole lot of action. Look out, baby, I'm your love man. I was hungry. I was hungry. I was hungry. Shake someone's hand and say, you got to be hungry. Shake someone's hand and say, you got to be hungry. You got to be hungry. So I'd like to leave this with you. I don't know what you want to do, but I believe that Zig was right. If you give enough people what they want, they will give you what you want. I believe Jim Rome was right. When the end comes to you, let it find you conquering the new mountain, not sliding down an old one. I believe Earl Nightingale was right. All of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. I believe that Dr. Peel was right. Always strive to get on top in life because the bottom is overcrowded. I believe Mike Williams is right. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. So I dedicate this to you, to the dreamer in you. Something my mother used to love to hear me say. Leslie, yes ma'am, mama. Say that thing for me, boy, that makes me feel good. I dedicate this to you. Because it's one thing to be in the business, but there's something else when the business is in you. You are here because it's in you. It's in your heart. And it says simply this, if you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it, if all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, and if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after that thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope, and confidence, and stern pertinacity, if neither cold, poverty, famish, or galt, sickness of pain of body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want. If